So just to summarize, the idea of caches and cache hierarchies are based on two hypotheses about programs. First, that they have temporal locality, that is, that an address that a program uses is likely to be reused again. Right? Often a program will process the same piece of data in multiple ways, and it's likely to ask for the same thing. The cache hierarchy makes sure that there's a positive correlation in performance to the temporal locality. The more recently you just use it, the quicker a value is available. Spatial locality refers to the phenomenon where a program that uses some data is likely to use some other data that's close by to that first bit in memory. And in that case, blocking is the feature of the cache system that positively correlates performance to the spatial locality. My random versus sequential access has provided some picture of memory. The book provides a more complete picture through this test program that can run with different numbers of elements and different strides. So the strides, um, where I had just fully jumping all over memory versus walking randomly through it, a stride is a more fine-grained control that, that uh, either accesses the next byte, or the next integer at least, um, or two integers later, or four integers later, and so on. So this program just loops over a certain number of elements with a certain stride, and the results in terms of performance can be plotted this way. In this graph, um, higher is faster, and you can see that when we have, let's see, the different uh, higher is faster, so that's performance, um, this axis uh, along the left edge is the stride. So a stride of 1 means simply uh, a sequential access, where a stride of 11 is jumping around enough that it starts to look like random access. Uh, on the right-hand side, the right-hand axis corresponds to the size of data that we're touching. So only looking at 32 kilobytes um, repeatedly, or all the way up to 128 megabytes in this picture. What you see along the back edge, where things are done sequentially, is generally higher performance, and that performance degrades the more you jump around. That is, as you move um, from the back left towards the front, uh, performance goes down. Meanwhile, performance also goes down when you go from smaller memories to larger memories, larger amounts of memories. And in particular, these, uh, these ridges here uh, correspond to different cache sizes. So right around 32 is the L1 cache, right around 256 is the L2 cache, um, right around 3 megabytes is the L3 cache. So there are relatively fat, flat regions in here where we're gradually filling up the cache before we bump up to the next layer in the cache hierarchy. Uh, the uh, stride pattern is more smooth because we are using the same amount of memory, just uh, using it up more quickly and moving out of it more quickly. Uh, the book points out that this very flat region here uh, in the back, where even over a couple of cache sizes you get the same performance, that's some special hardware uh, that's in the, the Haswell architecture that we don't really uh, touch on here, but it has to do with making sequential access work even better.